Welcome everybody. Uh, I hope it's going to be some entertainment and some good times for everybody involved. Uh, this is not very often that we do master classes where the stage director is in charge. So we have a little bit different angle because of that. We're going to probably talk a little bit less about vocal technique and a little less about uh, you know, something you already covered in the previous master classes. But we're going to talk about the dramatic side of things and sort of I'll try to kind of share with you my sort of point of view and see what you can offer and maybe we'll sort of come up with some interesting sort of uh, examples together. Uh, okay, without any further than talking, let's begin and I invite uh, the first person on stage who is Elisa Jordan. And now I'll be honest, for this afternoon is Ben Marquino.
Very nice, thank you. A lot of good details. Um, okay, tell us a little bit what the story is about. What's happening? What are you talking about? I am talking to Tamino, my beloved prince, who has decided to not speak to me. And I believe that he doesn't want to talk to me because he doesn't love me anymore. And thus, I want to die, or the only peace I will find is in death. Since I can't bear for him to not talk to me, he doesn't love me. Very good. Uh, this is the excellent exercise for Elise. Uh, because uh, she belongs, from my, it's my subjective opinion, uh, we work together in Don Giovanni. She is one of Don Elvira's in Don Giovanni production. And it's my sort of uh, estimate or assumption that she's one of the rare sort of personalities where you have to constantly ask her to do less. <laughs> because everything she does, she does, she has so much to offer. So it's, well, it doesn't happen often that I constantly, we're working on less is more in this particular case. So in the same way I felt about your performance today, not to be critical, but to be helpful, yes? And uh, there are some glimpses, surprisingly, of Donna Elvira in your performance. So, which is, uh, probably natural, since uh, you spent so much time lately with this character, that I would like to separate them as much as possible for a number of reasons, yes? Yeah. So, okay, so this is a great exercise on being vulnerable stage. We already talked that one of the greatest qualities and skills for the performers is to know when and how to be vulnerable on stage. And this is the greatest example. Uh, so, let's just begin and uh, just give me some words, the first words, to, uh, translate it into English, please. Uh, I feel it has disappeared. Um, it's happiness, love's happiness. I feel love's happiness has disappeared. Uh, never will come again. These happy hours. My heart, my heart's in my heart. We'll never come back. The joyful hours of my love. We usually, when we work, we kind of decide how many thoughts or different ideas that are in a piece. And so the first piece, uh, the first idea and the first part of it is, let's just summarize again in English. Oh, it has disappeared. Love's happiness. Um, these wonderful hours will never come back again. Very good. Okay. Well, let's begin. And so deliver this life to you. And who are you talking to? Tamino. Okay, where's Tamino? Good. So talk to me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, there will be not a lot of singing from this moment on, just a little bit. All right. Uh, what the first word is? Ah. And then? Ich Which means? I feel. Okay, so where's the feeling? What were you looking? There. So you felt that I, I need to look in. Yes, okay. So the other thing, important thing for us is to find out where the, our focus is, yes? Because it's like another very important sort of skill and knowledge to have, okay? So we're talking to him about how you feel. And even we can decide, are you talking to him or are you experiencing right now your right feeling? Right now I'm experiencing him. Okay, very good. So let's try that. Thank you. Why did you repeat it? <coughs> the the big part. To me, it's almost like a a cry of despair. I didn't notice any cry of despair in the first no. sort of I version. Know. Okay. So again, another thing is basically we're trying to 
speak it maybe first in our native sort of language and try to catch the natural sort of flow of what, what our body does, how that is supported. Yes? Very good. So I just noticed in your performance there are no gestures whatsoever. You said simplify. Okay? <laughs> no, no, simplifying means completely strip it of any meaning, yes? So we still have to kind of have some meaning. And basically, what is your goal right now? What are you trying to accomplish as a performer? Perfect. This is exactly what should happen. Anybody felt any pain? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's good to know. All right. So how about you make them? Make them feel your pain. See how we're going to do this. Right. Without any violence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So if you grab into your stomach, it feels like you're having some <laughs> stomach issues, yeah? Which also might happen, but it's not the most, probably, interesting choice, okay? okay? <laughs> it was a lot of good things the way you started, because you were in the right track, but it needs to be a little more emphasized, and I would add some kind of very speaking gesture. And also, at the beginning of the singing, I strongly believe it needs to be accented as far as your body. So I would begin the gesture right on the beginning. Ah, yes, the first ah, it's already the result of the pain, mm -hmm. or it's re in response to something, or in response sure. that he doesn't love you, or the ah is a response, so respond yeah. to something. Okay. Good? So how about with gesture, after you experience the pain, will come uninterrupted, very slow, and maybe to him. This would be you offering yourself to somebody, yes? And what I would like to see, you asking for help, right? What is the difference in this case between one hand and two? What do you think? This is more like you're offering, uh, gift, you're offering to give help, like I will help you. Okay. Why don't you try both and we'll see what works. Okay? Very good, thank you. Do you have a preference for which one which? Mm -hmm. I'm not disclosing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> So then you have to continue, you can't just uh, break it in the middle because it's not logical, yes? 
the logical is you have to continue until the thought is complete. So, I would and for musical reasons, it's the same way. Yeah. The musical phrase goes, there's an arc there, and which is must. Can I take a breath? Yes, you can take a breath. Okay. But, no, just keep going but you understand the difference between taking a breath and interrupting the thought. Yes. Okay, very good. So, <clears throat> There is a change of harmony, and we moved somewhere else. Why? You're for Imran. No, what happened? As a, as a performer, you need to notice that, yeah. and you need to ask yourself this question. There is a change of harmony. We're moving to a different place. Why is it happening? What am I going to do with it? How am I going to respond to that? Or not respond if you decide not to. So. In a way, the beginning was more of a feeling of shock, and this is a response to that, uh, could gear towards more anguish, emotions, does that make sense? First of all, let's talk about what. We always need to probably start with what, and then talk about how, okay? So what happening? Why are you moving? What's happening? Tamino did something. He probably turned his back or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's an easy way out, good. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, how about we talk about to you? Let's put his uh, <laughs> attention back to you. I think, not to kind of do all this to answer questions like too long, you have a different thought, yeah. which probably facilitates all this whole move. And the new thought is? Perhaps remembering the... No, the thought is, you're just saying, Imer. Never will these happy hours, they will never come back. So this is the realization that it's gone, yeah, it's and it will never come back. Because, remember, this is the first time you love, yes? Mm -hmm as a young girl or young woman, you never experienced these feelings before, so it's new. And because of that, if it's gone, you think it might be gone forever. Who is there to tell you otherwise? Your mom doesn't sort of give you much advice besides getting the knife into your hands, yes? Um, so, uh, as loving as she is. Yep. Uh, exactly. So anyway, so you didn't have a good sort of... Uh, Information. So, okay, anyway, so then first I need to see when you realize, oh my god, I feel that something is ended. And then you thought, and it will never come back. I'm going to be without love for the rest of my life. And for somebody who doesn't know how it works, it's huge. Okay, so can we try to incorporate both of them from the beginning? Very good. You thought it's going to be an easy ride. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> Never. So why are you repeating this and what's, what's the new quality, if the there's any? Nice. Yeah. Why did you want to write it this way? I think, you know, it's almost like a crying sensation weeping. Okay, very good. So what if, for example, you imagine, after you realize, um, again, 
I would simplify a little bit if you do it next time. So you have this very expressive face and you do this big eyes and it's a little bit like this southern movie technique which is not necessarily, it's like semaphoring instead of like flashing this kind of uh, fireworks you know, on your face which actually disrupts what you're doing. And uh, so we have to be aware of that, that's one. The second, when you realize that they're not coming back, do you want them back? So if you want them back, maybe you should try to try to bring them back before you give up okay. on this idea they're not coming back. And this is, sure. to me, it will one of the choices would be that it signifies your desire to to ask for it. Bam, bam, and you're doing the high notes, you're reaching out, but it's too late. Yeah. But we're not always able to let go so easily, especially when it happens for the first time mm -hmm. and it hurts so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So we will take it the second half and then try to work out maybe just yearning and trying to reach out for this. And if you're backed up, right, when you realize about this new sort of turn event, thank you, uh, maybe then you will try to, against all logic, you will try to reach out and catch. But yes, exactly. Okay. So from the phone? Yes. Change your phone. So it's not very obvious where he is. I don't notice almost how you switch from one to another. When you become okay, a little more right. noticeable. All right. So imagine as you were chasing your dream, he moved and he got that way already. It's somewhere okay. over there. So because of that, I would do a very definite turn to him and find him over here. Okay. As you said, he does something. He turns his back to you and then he moves across the stage. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's find him over there. Oh yeah. Okay, very good. Since we're also doing it, so when you reaching with your palms down like this, uh -huh. it would be one meaning. When you're reaching with your palms up like this, it would be another meaning. So you know, what are you trying to, to convey here? Uh, I'm reaching towards something. I mean, this would be like stop. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is going to be you stopping something like this, yes. But you're not stopping. You're actually asking for it to come yeah. back to you. So I would imagine either this, please come back to me, or I want to grab it somehow. But grabbing probably in this case reads too strong, yeah. yes? So maybe asking for it, yes. And reaching, reaching, and it's flying away, yes, very good. Let's make sure you're not very self conscious about what, how you look at this moment. So it doesn't okay. become a ballet, okay? Yes, yes, very good. Uh, <laughs> So can we do the, the sort of this part again and transition to Z Camino? Okay. Do you want to just do it through Hansen or? Uh, yes, let's do Hansen. change your focus and find a little bit more 
on this side. What do you think? What's your impression? Was it more clear? Okay, very good. So then, don't trust me, trust the audience, as they say, yeah? They all, they all planned it, trust them, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so you found him there, and what do you want him to see? You see, is he done? I'm No, besides your tears, what else do you want him to? That I love you. Okay. When you want somebody to understand that you love them, do you, how do you try to convey it? With force? No. You want to force him to no, feel it? No, no. So then you have to find another way. Yes, you have like Z. Uh, you know, yes. So we should find some other way to appeal to him, yes? And this is where we go to, I would imagine, we go to the opposite of forceful, which would be. Not forceful. And. <laughs> yeah, you're 100% correct. And if you, would, and if you would describe it. Leading? Yes, or. Begging? Starts with the B. B? Yes. Victorious. Yeah, Victorious maybe, but maybe in your grief, yes. Yeah. No, but I think too about being a bit vulnerable. Vulnerable! Oh. <laughs> and so this is, how do we portray vulnerable in this case? What would you do? What kind of body language would you choose to be vulnerable? Softer. Okay, softer is right. And then next, as far as the body language. Why open? It's vulnerable to be open. Why? Because your heart is exposed. Exactly. Because you're defenseless when you when you're not closing. And so this is again something you should watch when you perform, because a lot of times you're closing and you hold, you're putting your hands in front of you and you're holding it like this. It's a closed position. You're protecting yourself. So this is the protective position. If you may not feel protected, even if you do this, but it looks to us as though you're protecting yourself. In order to be vulnerable, you have to let go of all of your defenses and kind of open yourself to the world, to do it, and the person and so on. So this is vulnerability. So we have only a couple of seconds left, but let's try this at the transition, Zeta Mino, and talk to him in the most vulnerable and defenseless way. Very good.
Yes, all right. Anyway, so first of all, thank you for being open to some suggestions. And uh, I hope that it will serve you in thinking about this area a little bit further and sort of, again, this is not a final interpretation. Of course not. I'm aware that there are many ways to interpret it. But because of what I know about you, what I observed, I thought it would be the most helpful feedback sort of for now so you can sort of consider if you can incorporate it into your. Okay, very good. Thank you.